Hello crafty friends, do you have lots of white paper scraps that you would like to get out of your stash and onto your cards? If the answer is yes, then stick around because I have got six videos for you, one a day, in which I go through my tub of white paper scraps and create lots of cards with the aim of using them up. So to make today's cards, the first thing I did was choose some scraps that I could patchwork together using some washi tape and turn them into essentially one big piece of paper. And I did this just to make it easier to work on. I could do exactly the same thing to all of them in a really straightforward way. I flipped the scraps over and used washi tape from my use it or lose it washi tape box to tape them all together on the back. Once I was satisfied I had a big enough piece of paper, I flipped it over and worked on the front, as you'd expect. And I decided just to do some simple blending to start with. I've got shaded lilac distress oxide here and I'm using my blending brush to blend in a rather scruffy fashion the colour all over my cobbled together piece of paper. I'm not looking for a perfect blend. The aim is to create something that I can cut down and use in smaller pieces. And this style of blending ink gives a nice kind of mottled look, I think. After the shaded lilac, I added some milled lavender. This is a bit of a warmer purpley colour. This just brings in a bit of variation. Again, I'm just going for scruffy blending. It'll all come together in a minute, don't worry. So if you've got ideas of what to do with white paper scraps or you have something you regularly do with your scraps to use them up, then do let us know in the comments because the more ideas, the merrier. Once I'd finished with the milled lavender, I brought in another colour, tumbled glass, which is a lovely pale blue. And these are all analogous colours. They're near each other on the colour wheel, so they're going to blend without making mud. Next, I splattered on some water because I wanted to mottle my paper even further. I gave it a really good splattering with some really big splats. And when that was done, I rolled my paper towel over it to pick up the lifted ink and then gave it a good old dry with my hairdryer. Once all that was done, I decided to do some stamping and I've got these stitched square stamps. They're quite scribbly, which I thought went well with the scruffy background. I ended up using some Majestic Violet Archival Ink, which is permanent and waterproof, partly because I'm using silicone stamps and these are my best inks for my silicone stamps. And partly so that if I added any more wet media or water to my pieces, then the stamped images wouldn't lift off. When I was stamping, I tried to distribute the different squares well so that I didn't have, say, two big ones right on top of each other or two small ones. Because when I pull these bits apart, I'm going to die cut from them and I want to create some die cuts with variation on them. I did also do some second generation or ghost stamping. So I stamped the stamps once and without re-inking, I stamped them again. And that just gives a fainter impression. It doesn't work so well, I find, with archival inks because they're pretty good at transferring from the stamp to the paper the first time you stamp them. But it does work to some degree. It's also a good way of cleaning off your stamps as well. Next, I brought in a stencil. This just has some blob shapes on it, some uneven rectangular blobs. And I used the tumbled glass again to stencil on the pattern. Again, just for interest and variation and layering and depth. And because I enjoy using stencils, a lot of my mixed media pieces take shape the way they do just because I really enjoy using the particular supplies and tools and mediums that I have at hand. After that I spattered on some blue metallic ink and some violet metallic ink just for some shimmer and shine and dried it again with my hairdryer. 
Once everything was dry, I peeled the washi tape off the back because I didn't want to work on it as one piece anymore. I felt it was ready for some die cutting. Because I'd used square stamps on my background, I decided to use squares to die cut my shapes. I used my three smallest plain square dies. Don't worry if you haven't got square dies, you can always use a trimmer or a guillotine to cut out your squares. It's probably the easiest shape to cut. And if you want that die cut look, just run an embossing tool around the edge of your square and that will bevel the edges and make it look as if it's been die cut. Now that I had all my squares cut, I sorted them out into sizes, into small, medium and large really. And I decided to add some gold heat embossing because I do just love the gold and purple look. On my largest squares, I stamped a grungy splotchy image that came from a grungy splotchy stamp set. I then dipped each of these into my gold embossing powder and then heated them all in one go. When I'm doing something like this, I like to uh, work in batches, I think. I enjoy that kind of process and it just makes everything quicker. Next I did the middle sized squares and I took some PVA, mixed it with some water and spattered it onto my middle sized squares. I then dipped these one at a time into gold embossing powder and then heat them with my heat tool to melt it. I do find the PVA and water mix really good for splatters. I find if I just use water, the water can evaporate a bit fast and uh, the embossing powder doesn't always stick properly to the thing that I'm trying to heat emboss. Finally, I set about heat embossing on my smallest squares and I took some more washi from my use it or lose it washi box and lined up all my small squares on the washi just to hold them all together and to make them easier to work with. I then treated them with my anti-static powder tool, which was really easy given that they were on the washi. If you're working with really small die cuts, it can be a bit of a pickle to uh, treat them with your anti-static powder tool. Then I found another grungy mixed media stamp and stamped in embossing ink dipped them in embossing powder and then heated them as a strip again just to make them easier to handle and to stop them blowing away and once they were all cooled I separated them into individual squares. I did feel that they needed a little bit of definition around the edge they were looking a bit kind of plain so I took some wilted violet distress oxide which is very similar in purple tone to the majestic violet archival ink and I scraped each side of the square on the ink pad just to add a little bit of ink around the edges right what I'm going to do now is make a card for you using some of my squares then off camera I'll use the rest of the squares and come back at the end of the video and show you the other cards that I've made so I've chosen one square in each size and each one has got a different type of heat embossing on it and I'm going to arrange them down the card like this in a cascade kind of higgledy piggledy and I'll press them down with a bit of non-stick paper I decided I want a die cut to go on the top of this but it needs a bit of punch to make it stand out so I've used this die and cut a leafy branchy thing in black and in white now when I pulled the white one out it broke but I'm going to lean into that and use it as two separate branches behind the black die cut. To add glue to the back of my die cuts, I've got a sponge dauber that I've got dedicated to using with glue. And I'll just daub that on the back and stick it about there. And then do the same with this one. I'll press that down with the non-stick deli paper again and now I'll add glue to the back of my black branch. This black cardstock isn't as 
sturdy as the white cardstock so I do have to be a little bit difficult otherwise it will tear and the glue will dry clear so it doesn't matter that it's gone on the front so I've got a thinking of you sentiment in a quite straightforward all capital letter font I'm going to stamp that in black ink on a piece of scrap white paper so it's another use for your paper scraps you can stamp your sentiments on them and I'm going to cut it out using this stitched rectangle die which I'll hold down with washi tape it's a bit long for this particular sentiment so I'm going to shuffle the die until the teeth lock Hold it in place with the washi tape again. And I've just captured the end of the die in the embossing folder, so it will only cut the very tip. Now we have the perfect size sentiment, which I was thinking of popping up there, but I'm just thinking about maybe having it there instead, just over this part here, but still having a little bit of the colour peeking out that side so it stands out. Yeah, I will put some extra card on this end to support it. Get a little bit of glue there. Dip that in. Now we can put that there. As a finishing touch, I'm gonna to dot some Morning Dew Nouveau Drops, just a couple on each square. This will probably absorb some of the Distress Oxide inks that are on there, but that's okay. And there we have a Thinking of You card. Right, do hang around for a couple more minutes because I'm going to come back and show you the other cards that I've made with these squares. Right, I'm back and I have made a total of seven cards. This is the one that you saw me make. And I just wanted to point out that the Morning Dew Nouveau Drops, now that they're dry, have in places absorbed some of the wilted violet and changed colour slightly but I think I quite like that variation and on this one I just did a cascade of different size squares on the right hand side of the card coming in from the top and going off the bottom spreading out the different gold embossed patterns I stamped I Heard Today Is Your Birthday on some smooth white cardstock and cut it out using its coordinating die. I also put two die cuts on the back so it's actually three layers thick. I think that might be slightly too thick. If I did this again, I would just put one die cut underneath it so it was only two layers thick. And as a finishing touch, I added gold Nouveau drops just around the sentiment area. And I think the black sentiment pops nicely, just like the black branch pops nicely on there. This card is a bit more clean and simple. I just took one of the larger squares, turned it so it's a diamond, popped it roughly in the middle, added a It's Your Day sentiment in black. And then, so there was a bit more black, I took a thin gel pen and drew a doodly border around the outside and again added some gold nouveau drops sometimes i think we shouldn't mix two different golds on the same card but honestly that's just a rule that i've made up in my head and it doesn't matter at all i think this gold and this gold work just fine together card number four is a landscape card and again i've got a cascade i suppose of squares i've got the medium sized ones and the small ones and I just put some here and some here with none in the middle, just to bring in a bit more white space. I used that It's Your Day stamp and die again and the Gold Nouveau drops. And an It's Your Day card can be used for lots of different occasions, not just birthdays. And again, I've got another It's Your Day card. I went for a diagonal design using some of the medium and smaller size squares and the Gold Nouveau drops around the sentiment again. And I like that I've got this white space here and here. It really helps all this stand out. Here we have another landscape card. This is card number six. And I went for a present theme. I can't go past squares without turning them into presents of some sort. 
So I went for a strip of presents in the bottom half of the card coming in from either side. So I've got a sliver here and a bigger chunk here. I alternated the sizes so you've got a bit of bounce, a bit of energy. And then I made some bows for these three presents. Obviously you didn't need one for this one here. And this could be a really long, thin present that has a bow over here. And I get to stick to the rule of threes, having three elements. So I quite like the way they go down at that angle. To make the bow, I just took some smooth white cardstock, swiped on some wilted violet, and then heat embossed them with clear embossing powder. And I did that three times. So they're quite dimensional. They look like enamel shapes. For my sentiment, I wanted to go bold because this is quite bright and busy. And I chose a happy birthday, stamped it in black on white cardstock. And that stands out really nicely. I didn't feel like I needed any gold Nouveau drops on here. There's enough going on. And for my last card, another present. And this one's got a bit of an oversized bow. Again, I dithered about whether to mix golds, but I went for it in the end and I think it looks fine. So I cut two bows from gold foil cardstock. And on one of the bows, I chopped off the ribbons and stuck that on top. So this bow part is two layers thick. And I cut a little circle out of gold fold cardstock and stuck it on for the knot of the bow. And then obviously just popped it on the top of the present and stamped a happy birthday in wilted violet. And I think that's lovely and clean and simple. Again, no Nouveau drops needed. So there we have seven cards made from white paper scraps. I use white paper scraps to make the mixed media that I cut the squares from. I used a white paper scrap to cut out the branches here. And I use white paper scraps to do my sentiments on. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some ideas of how to use your white paper scraps, get them out of your stash and onto your cards. If it has, please let me know in the comments and feel free to share any of your white paper scrap ideas. And please come back tomorrow for video two in our white paper scrap series. We'll be doing something quite different to this. Right, thanks for watching. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.